Hi, welcome to Civil Era and here is yet another blog from us where we are going to discuss a new topic today. Cracks in concrete is a very vast subject that needs a detailed discussion. However, in this vlog we will discuss about a few reasons for cracks and we also will discuss a few points about identifying if the crack is structural and if the crack is progressing. We will have a detailed discussion about all other types of cracks and detailed analysis of different kinds of cracks and its mitigation and solutions in later blogs. So let's make this a series of blogs. Today let this be an introduction of some of the reasons for cracks and some of the measures to identify if the crack is structural. So welcome to this blog. I'm Premjit, structural consultant and founder of Civilera.com. As we all know, RCC or reinforced cement concrete is a material weak in tension. Due to this inherent weakness, concrete is bound to crack whatever we do. Whatever attention we give it, there are going to be minor cracks in concrete, we like it or not. But most of it will not be visible if we take care of it. So there are different things that can go wrong at site. There are different things that can go wrong in design and construction and so on, which might create more visible cracks in your structure. So the blog's attempt is to explain you some of the reasons. And then in a series of blog, we are going to discuss various other aspects, including how we can reduce it in design, how we can control it better. Now, some of the cracks can be harmless strength point of view, though all cracks can result in durability issue. Now, if somebody asks you if there is any crack that is harmless, in reality, all cracks are harmful because even if it is non-structural, the existence of the crack, which if it is unattended, will result in durability issues and corrosive agents like water and oxygen getting into the crack or even other harmful chemicals getting into the cracks and then deteriorating the reinforcement and thus the strength of the concrete. So structural or non-structural all cracks are harmful but then non-structural cracks can be attended to more faster and easier and then you can close the crack and make it durable also even if the cracks are harmless it will create bad effects on aesthetics and induce a psychological fear in occupants so it is mandatory to attend to any cracks as early as possible from the time of detection for the health of a building structure now let us quickly discuss some of the causes for crack formation. There are various ways we can classify cracks into. One way is to classify it into cracks occurring in pre-hardened stage and one occurring after hardening. So before hardening, during placement, the concrete can have cracks and after placement, after hardening, also the concrete can have cracks. So let us see some of the pre-hardening stage kind of cracks. One of the main crack formation during pre-hardening stage is construction movement. It could be a form work settling due to improper form working. It could be a subgrade settling. It could be many things like that. Both these points which I explained are results of bad materials or bad workmanship. So if the form work is swelling if, if it is wooden and then if it is swelling due to water presence then it can result in formwork movement and settling of soil due to improper compaction can result in grade slab settling and formation of cracks in the grade slab and the structures around that. Now another crack reason during pre-hardening stage is settlement shrinkage. Now it can be a result of rebar or formwork obstruction. So if your concrete is not placed properly, it's not vibrated properly, if it is not reaching all the points where it is required, then that can result in settlement later. Settlement as in settlement shrinkage, what I mean is. And using dense mixes with low water content is a solution and adequate compaction can also be a solution for that. So if you do this and if you take care of the workmanship during construction, during detailing stages, that can help. Now a bad detail produced, what I mean is during design and detailing stage, if you have a congested detailing sent out to site and if the site tries to replicate that, then that can also result in 
bad workmanship at the site and that can result in problems as well so settlement shrinkage is directly related to the obstruction from rebar or form work but sometimes it is related to your details how you have produced in after the design setting shrinkage plastic or drying shrinkage due to chemical reactions and rapid drying respectively so the reasons for that is chemical reactions and rapid drying so the solution for rapid drying is that you can reduce it by proper protection from wind and any reason that can create uh, early drying so you need to mitigate it in that way now post hardening stage is something a little more important you can have drying shrinkage due to loss of water which can result in cracks on slabs dense mixes with low water and cement content is a solution and also proper and adequate curing can help in reducing the drying shrinkage and loss of water now chemical action can also result this can create expansion of aggregates and rebars so any action of chemicals on rcc concrete and rebars can create expansion of them so you can have cracks as a result so the solution is non reactive aggregates low alkali cement and adequate cover to rebar which will make it more durable another reason for crack formation is temperature and climatic changes can create external cracks in buildings because of the temperature variation so wherever needed expansion joints are to be provided designing structurally for temperature stresses all these are solutions now every time you may not have to give expansion joints sometimes you may not be able to give expansion joints architecturally and functionally architects and clients might ask you to exclude expansion joint in your design and in such cases you are required to accommodate the expansion by providing analysis for temperature stresses so this can be done this can be done in any tabs this can be done in any software but then you need to have a thorough understanding of the temperature stresses and its attention so we will discuss all this in a separate blog we will not have time to discuss each and every point here in this particular vlog we will discuss it elaborately as a series of blogs so who are interested to learn more about the different kinds of crack formation and different mitigation processes and uh, various patterns of cracking can follow this blog we will have a series of blog it could be monthly once or weekly twice or something like that we will decide the frequency later but those who are required to get this can follow us they can fill up the form in civilera.com and you will get it delivered in your inbox i have given the links in the blog so you can always go back and check that now the most important or the most cracks that needs to be attended very carefully are structural cracks now structural cracks occur when the stresses are excessive than the capacity now this can happen due to various reasons it could be a building settlement when the building settles if your soil is not explored if the kind of foundation that you have given is not appropriate if your sizing is not done properly if your foundation type is not proper if you have given a raft instead of a pile foundation if you have given an isolated footing instead of a combined footing where it was required all this can result in settlement of your building sometimes even construction methods construction sequence interface of your building your boundary conditions your existing building at the neighborhood the surcharge load if you have a basement if you have a basement in the existing building neighboring or if you are excavating a basement all this matters the way the method the sequence all this can create settlement of the building if it is not done properly so we will discuss that in a separate blog we will have one blog each for each case that i have written here then another possibility of crack formation due to strength reason could be overloading sometimes a building is designed for a particular kind of load and the load is coming excessive to that sometimes you don't design it for wind and seismic sometimes you don't consider a storage but it is converted into a storage building so any excessive load can create crack formation due to strength reason sometimes construction mistakes detailing mistakes the location of the lap inadequacy of rebars due to detailing mistakes or 
improper location of devils provided all that can create crack for me sometimes even design mistakes and under design do happen so that could be a reason for crack formation even vibration can be a reason for crack formation at times so we will look into it later now that we have discussed some of the reasons for crack formation let us discuss a method is to identify if the cracks are structural and to see if the crack is progressing so one inspection way for understanding if a crack that you see is structural or not is inspecting either side or either face of your structural member so if it's a beam and if you see a crack on one side go and inspect the other side if you have crack on either side the chances that it is a structural crack is more the same way if you have a crack on a wall and then you are seeing it on either side the chances are going to be more than that's a structural crack it doesn't guarantee that it's a structural crack all the time but then there is a very good amount of chance that it is a structural crack now this will be more clear to you when we discuss more elaborately on the type of crack and the pattern of cracking and all that in the subsequent blocks so those who are interested to understand this should follow this blog and then fill the contact form in the link that i have given and then wait for the subsequent blog so that you understand it more carefully now one more point i want to add is the bridging ability of your structure the redistribution ability of your structure which is a virtue and many times the alternate load path available due to this redistribution ability comes as a help should a structural crack occur so what i mean to say is sometimes a structural crack occurs but the bridging ability or an alternate load path that is existing in the structure helps the structure to stand there without falling now what i mean to say is i will just quickly draw a sketch and then explain it to you so assume that this is a one way slab and you are short of strength in this direction so now maybe some crack occurred here due to lack of strength it could be any reason so say 8 at 100 was needed and then at site 8 at 200 was given so the steel given is very less than what is actually needed so essentially the structure may not fall apart because it has minimum steel in the other direction as well even though it is designed as a one way slab it has a capacity to distribute the load in the other direction as well because there are rebars in the other direction you will generally give a minimum steel of t8 at 250 or something similar ensuring that there is minimum steel and the maximum spacing criteria is met so when you have given it at 250 definitely it can distribute load in the other direction as well so sometimes even if a micro crack or if a crack forms even if it's a visible crack if it is very much deficient in steel the redistribution ability or the alternate load path your structure can load transfer in the other direction and that ability will ensure that the structure is going to stand there so the crack may not progress further and it's a settled crack after a few days the crack progression will stop and if the ability of the structure if uh, if your structure has the ability to transfer the load in the other direction partly then your crack progression may stop this is what redistribution is all about and this can happen in your beam it can happen in your slab it can happen in all the flexural members so if that ability is existing then you may not have a huge problem at hand even though that crack has formed so you can take some corrective measures for the crack formation by treating that crack and then ensuring the durability so in such cases sometimes sticking a thin glass piece across the crack immediately after the crack formation and when you observe that if you do that then you can wait for a few days and check if the glass is breaking the glass being brittle and when it is stuck there across the crack say a small glass piece a thin glass piece which is stuck across the crack might break if the crack is progressing so that's a good method to detect if the crack is progressing you can stick a couple of glass pieces a very thin glass pieces across the crack and then wait for a few days to see if the crack is progressing so if the crack is not progressing the glass will not break if it is progressing very much definitely that glass piece is going to break and show you the sign that the cracks are still progressing and you can take more quick remedial measures
So as I said, we will try to discuss all the structural reasons for crack formation and the pattern of cracking and the remedies in the subsequent blocks. So it could be a series of two or three blocks. I'm not sure I have to put together content and then decide how many blocks it should be. So wait for the blocks. If you want to subscribe to our blogs, please fill in the form here, which you can find in the link in the blog. So as a summary, there are various reasons of cracking and some of these can be structural. It's very important to understand the reasons for cracking to mitigate any risk associated with this. So that's it from me today. I hope you had a good learning with this blog. So thanks for watching. I wish you a good learning and a career. Thank you.